In many popular history sources, the story of how the T-3045 got its 85mm gun is a quite simple one. Uh, the Soviets captured a Tiger tank in January of 1943. They shot it up, it turns out the 76mm F-34 was not a viable weapon against it, and so they put a 85mm gun in the turret. Easy peasy. Uh, very easy and simple answer. Unfortunately, as easy and simple answers go, uh, it's wrong. And so I decided to make this video to kind of tell you the slightly more complicated story about how an 85mm gun ended up in the turret of a T-34 tank. The idea to put an 85mm gun into a T-34 tank arose in June of 1940. This was actually the same month that the T-34 entered production. Uh, the gun in question was the 52K uh, AA gun, the model 1939 85mm AA gun uh, that was still relatively new at the time. Um, this gun was a dual purpose weapon, much like the famous 88mm Flak, uh, and actually descends from the same Rhine metal gun. And so the Soviets were quite aware of the fact that it was a potent anti tank weapon in addition to being a uh, anti aircraft weapon. Um, and so this was actually a very unconventional tank destroyer. It was fully turreted. Uh, so something like what the Americans ended up doing with their tank destroyers. Unfortunately, we don't really know what it looks like or it would have looked like because even though Factory 183 allocated two turretless chassis to the task, this project died and uh, no, I haven't seen any kind of information about what would have come out of it. Fortunately for us, that was not the end. Um, the idea of putting an 85mm gun into a T-34 tank reappeared again in May of 1941. So again, this is before uh, the German invasion, before Operation Barbarossa. Um, at this point, the Tiger exists as a sort of vague idea and a bunch of experimental chassis. So can't possibly be a response to the Tiger. Uh, this time, there's actually two different directions. Um, a casemate tank destroyer, so something like what the SU-85 ended up being, is envisioned on the chassis of the T-34 tank. It's called SU-34, very creatively. Uh, and then the idea of a turret tank destroyer comes back. This tank destroyer is called U-20. There's actually two variants of it. The U-20, which uses um, a gun with the ballistics of the 53K, and then, uh, so 52K, and then you have the U20-2, which actually takes just the entire AA gun and put it into a very large and bulky turret just to make production easier. Uh, when the Germans invade, this the projects actually lasted all the way until the spring of 1942, at which point they were closed. Uh, the idea of a T-34, um, chassis for tank destroyer was considered viable, uh, but the variant that just used the 52k gun as is was too bulky, and the variant that required development of a new gun, uh, well, it required development of a new gun, which nobody had time for. Now, interestingly enough, this was not the only 85mm gun project at the time. Uh, there were quite a few developed in between 1940 and 1942, mostly for uh, Soviet heavy tanks. So first the T220 and then the KV-1. These projects didn't really get much traction because, well, the F-34, the 76mm gun was more than enough to fight German tanks, uh, which only had up to 50 millimeters of armor. At really any range, over 2,000 meters, you could penetrate the front. So there wasn't really any point of introducing a new caliber since tanks did not use 85mm shells. Uh, to fight, you know, something that might or might not ever turn up. Unfortunately for the Red Army, it did turn up. Um, and in January of 1943, uh, the Red Army captured four uh, Tiger tanks, uh, two of which were in rough shape, uh, two of which were actually in pretty good shape. And shooting up one of them revealed that, unfortunately, the F-34 gun and the ZIS-5, which had the same ballistics, are not viable weapons against this Tiger tank. And you might say, ah, okay, so this is now where they put the 85mm gun in, like Wikipedia told me. Well, not exactly. There was a big wish list of uh, projects to counter the Tiger tank that the GUB-2 uh, put out in the spring of 1943. 
and an 85mm gun does appear in it. Unfortunately, um, for Wikipedia, the 85mm gun goes not in a turret of a T-34 tank, but in a tank destroyer. Uh, this idea eventually evolved into the SU-85, but uh, what was requested in the spring of 1943 was actually a rear casemate tank destroyer or something like the SU-76. Um, now, the T-34, the tank, was in that list, um, but the upgrade that it received to fight the Tiger was not an 85mm gun, it was a 57mm gun. Uh, this was the revival of a tank destroyer project envisioned in the summer of 1941. Um, and I have a whole separate video about that, but um, it was uh, it used the ZIS-4 gun, which was a ZIS-2 anti-tank gun adapted for use in, um, in, in a tank. And so this was the separation of labor. Uh, 85 millimeter gun went into a tank destroyer with a casemate and a turreted tank received a 57 millimeter gun. And this division worked until uh, the summer of 1943 when the Soviets encountered the Panther. And even though the Tiger was heavier and had thicker armor all around, the Panther had a more imposing frontal armor in no small part because it was heavily sloped. And so a review of Soviet armament in the fall of 1943 revealed some very uh, unpleasant facts. So the towed 56, uh, 57 millimeter gun, sorry, there's this two, it was considered to be okay for a towed gun. Um, there's always going to be some kind of weight limit, size limit uh, when it comes to weapons that at the end of the day, the crew has to just push around the battlefield on their own power. But if you're putting something in the tank turret, you can uh, really get something beefier than a 57 millimeter gun. And so um, the Red Army, they did end up building four prototypes of the T-34 with a 57 millimeter, um, but it never entered mass production. So in October of 1943, you do see new requirements saying that, hey, the 57 is not enough, we need to have an 85 millimeter gun in the turret of our medium tanks. And this was a very considerable step that actually resulted in a pretty big revision of medium tank projects at the time. Um, so as I mentioned before, the Soviets were actually very confident about the penetrating power of the 76 millimeter the F-34. And so not only was the T-43 medium tank in development at the time, carrying the same gun, but actually the heavy tank, the IS-1 heavy tank, was originally carrying the 76mm gun. Um, and if you've read my book, you would know that the IS-1 project had to be changed drastically in order to fit this new larger weapon. Well, the T-43 couldn't quite manage the same transformation. Even though a mock-up was built with an 85mm Z5T gun in the turret, the resulting weight of this tank was estimated at something like 30, 36 tons. And, well, that was just too much for a medium tank. The project was cancelled. However, it didn't all go to waste. Um, the turret was repurposed for the T-34 chassis. And so the T-3045 tank uh, that you see coming out of the factories in early 1944 is this kind of culmination um, of these two projects where the T-43 was cancelled, but its turret was reimagined uh, for the existing medium tank. However, that's not the end of the story. So interestingly enough, uh, the idea that the 57 millimeter gun might not be enough had already come up earlier. Um, and so the project to, f there was the four prototypes built um, with the 57 millimeter gun in the original hexagonal turret of the T-34, but there were actually projects of other, even more powerful guns. So there was a tank built with the S-54 um, this is a, an adaptation of the 1931 um, 76mm AA gun. Uh, this project was previously considered uh, in 1941 for heavy tanks, but it was dropped at the time. But that wasn't the end. Uh, there was actually a development of an 85mm gun. So with the same ballistics um, as the Soviet heavy tanks that have had at the time, but in that original hexagonal turret. And of course, in order to fit a gun of that size and power, you need to really work on the breech to miniaturize it and make it smaller, make it portable, actually get it to fit into, well, 
the 14, uh, 14 to 20 millimeter white turret ring. There was not a lot of room inside that tank. And so uh, the idea was tested. There were actually a number of guns um, that were designed for, for this. Uh, the S53, the LB1. Um, can't remember if there were others on the top of my head. But the S53 was considered to be actually a pretty good adaptation of the uh, 52K. And so a decree was actually passed that accepted this tank into production. However, uh, trying to fit such a big gun into such a small turret did have its drawbacks, and sensible minds prevailed and actually combined these two projects. So the enlarged turret that came from the T-43 project and the compact gun that came from the T-34 project, uh, these got put together into a whole new tank. Um, the gun, the gun was actually an improved version of uh, this S53 rather than just S53. But um, even though they had already started making the first T3045s with this, um, with the T twenty, uh, with the T5 gun, vast majority of T3045 tanks were built with this this S53, the much more compact version. Uh, most factories didn't even begin producing the D5. They just started straight with the uh, ZIS S53. So in conclusion, um, the Red Army started thinking about putting an 85mm gun into the T-34 tank long before the Tiger had even been drawn on paper. Uh, this tank gun was reserved for tank destroyers, not tanks, and even after the Tiger showed up, the anti-Tiger weapon that went into T-34 tanks was a 57mm gun, not an 85mm the policy to install 85 millimeter gun, guns only into tank destroyers and heavy tanks was revised as a result of the Panther's appearance in July of 1943, rather than the Tiger's appearance earlier that year. So as you can see, the story of how the T-34 became the T-3045 is a little bit more interesting, a little bit more complicated than maybe you thought originally.